look what it's been waiting for me. Guys, look, look. I cannot wait to pick me some peppers. It's amazing to think that in a few short months, we went from this to this. I just love how resilient the garden can be. I am totally in awe of a garden, especially when you have a specific plant that just gets decimated by pests, hornworms, rabbits, deer, whatever, and then it just comes back and it shows you what it's made of, which I should have faith in this garden. I should have faith in these jalapenos. And the reason for that being is jalapenos almost never, like never volunteer in zone 5B here in East Central Indiana. And I've gotten four years, four years of volunteers. So I know that these peppers are tough and I can't wait to bring you guys along when I pickle them, can them and store them away. Stay tuned for that video. So outside of my fabulous jalapeno peppers, a couple of tomatoes that are hanging on and don't want to ripen out here, especially since we're not getting very warm anymore. I think tops during the day, we might get to seven degrees. That's nothing like the nineties of summer. It's so sad when fall rolls, rolls around. There are a lot of things to be thankful for um, in the fall time season. So you guys can see, oh my God, a hornworm. There's a hornworm. But guys, nature is working right here. This is super duper pretty cool. I'm really glad to see this. Look what I found. It's a hornworm. I bet it's your fault that my peppers are gone. But you guys can see, like, look, look what it's doing. But look what is on its back. We have an audience now. <laughs> we found this hornworm, but really what's really cool about this hornworm and all of these little eggs on it, those are actually a breed of wasp. And what they do is they find hornworms and they lay their eggs on the back of the hornworm so that when their babies hatch, <laughs> that they go down into the hornworm and they eat it from the inside out. It's kind of like, it's a, sim well, I won't even call it a symbiotic relationship because symbiotic means that they both benefit, whereas the hornworm doesn't benefit in the end. <laughs> but this is really cool to see in our garden. You don't like it, guys? I want to just like take Is all it the gross? little nest and take, tear them off. We're going to move them out of the garden. Are you going to Ah, we found another one, guys. Look. Right there. Why are they laying eggs on them? Uh, Zoom in on it. Why are they Oh, it moved. Huh? I know it it's moved, so Willow. <laughs> We've got our niece and nephew over playing with Joe today. So like, it's really cool sometimes to find stuff like this because like they're here and I'm like, guys, come here. It's so cool. They might think it's a little gross, but it is so cool. So we've actually got two hornworms in here that have a set of these eggs on it. Dude, like, dude, it's so cool. So cool. I've, I've heard of these in other people's gardens. I've never had hornworms until this year, but then I'm super excited to see this this part of it because I see pictures of it all the time on social media platforms especially like gardening forums but I never get to see it in real life and it's just it's so cool so I guess that kind of answers my question too as to what got my peppers it was those hornworms so I guess just to be on the safe side I'm going to go ahead and harvest all the peppers that are ready I wasn't ready for it but I guess not many things happen on the farm or we're just really ready for it. Hornworm number one. Just gonna move him out and away. Um, I'm gonna let the hornworm have the rest of this small sprig that I gave him, but more so I'm going to let the uh, wasp eggs hatch and let nature do its thing because it's actually super cool. So there we go. Our first and only tomato harvest this year at our garden. But we got to see a hornworm and I think it's hilarious because any other year I would be horrified to see that insect in my garden. But this year because we're breaking it down, we're moving it, we're actually just cleaning things up. 
it was really cool to see it. Like stuff like that is just the neatest here. It's just the neatest. You get to see things when you homestead or garden or work with livestock that nobody else gets to see. It's like, it's, it's a huge privilege. It's a huge privilege to get to see those things and witness those things that most of the population of the world will never get to see or experience. Gotta love you some goldenrod. The bees love it this time of year too, because with fall coming in and colder weather, there are fewer and fewer things for these guys to pollinate. And as much as goldenrod might make us sneeze, it's really good for the bees and it actually goes into a lot of good medicinal uses. We might see more about that later on. So pretty. Oh well, we try. Oh no, my papers. Huh? Oh my papers. Oh no, I'm not my papers. Oh, I'm not the papers. Yeah, this one's pretty done. Well, see, like you got one side that's pretty good, like this side, no rot. Other side, terrible. Yeah, this side, totally salvageable. This one. Oh, it bit back right here. And those are pressure treated boards. But you saw, depending on where some of these boxes were in our garden, some of them are a little bit more deteriorated than others. And that one wasn't happy about me moving it and decided to swing back, whack me in the face, fall apart. But hey, homestead life, I guess. I guess I kind of deserved it. This is another one that's pretty deteriorated. I hope this one don't fight back. And lift with the legs. Oh, it's still pretty good. Pretty good. So, I've only got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've removed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Halfway through. Another hornworm, but not as easy to see because he doesn't have the eggs. And I found oh, another one. So cool. So after I relocated the first hornworm, I decided eventually the game plan is that once all of these garden boxes are out of here, we're actually gonna take the Premier One fencing and we're gonna enclose this area and we're gonna let them also go out into the old cornfield so that they have a lot more forage and a lot more browse to go through. And I figure the hornworms can stay in here, eat all the tomatoes that I'm not going to harvest, fatten up good and plenty. Maybe another wasp will find them, but ultimately the ducks are going to come in here. And I think the ducks are going to make some short work of Mr. Hornworm. But that's the general plan is to get the ducks over here and to kind of do some um, cleaning up for me, getting rid of some of the extra greens so that I don't have to worry about them. But eventually this is all going to be part of the duck pen. That's the whole reason we're getting rid of the garden. So while part of me is really sad to see this garden end, I'm really excited to see what the garden up there looks like when it begins in the spring. So Mark is a beast. This is two nights in a row that he's just like pushing his limit and that's hole number two but that's the last corner post. So once we get that like it really does get a lot easier. But while he's been doing the hard work I've just been fussing, putting up 
that fence, that Premier One fence that used to be over that way, I'm gonna make it to where I can just open up the duck coop and let them out. It'll make it easier for me to put them back into because the doors open and close and it's a bigger um, area for me to herd them into. So you guys can see like we've got it going through the corn and it's all the way down there. But now I've got another 100 foot section of fence that I'm gonna take out into the pasture. So these duckies get some good pasture in them. It'll help me on my feed bill because quite honestly at this point in the year, what they're grazing in their pen is pretty spent, which means I'm having to feed them a lot more. Watch me try to get over this Premier One fencing without falling. But I'm having to feed them a lot more, which <laughs> hurts my checkbook. There's just a lot of things right now with the economy, animal feed, livestock feed, corn, stuff like that. It is on the rise. So it's been kind of difficult seeing those bigger feed bills come in. But now I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this fencing and bring it all the way back to meet up with that fencing. And it's almost dark and I do wanna get a little bit of video of them coming out and enjoying their forage. happy and they've got this portion behind where their fence is going to be of garden to help reclaim it and do some permaculture in there and get it ready for when it's sowed or if we decide to do something back there then the soil will be good and ready and I think that's going to do it guys I'm really happy to see these guys out moving around this man behind me is a beast he has been sitting post like a monster <laughs> but I know we're both happy with what we've gotten done you guys can see behind me that'll be another episode of all the things that are going on on mulberry branch farm so i'm happy you guys came along with us today if you enjoyed the video let us know by dropping us a like leaving us a comment and subscribing but if you subscribe make sure you hit the dingy bell so that you get notifications the next time that we have another episode for you to enjoy but in the meantime we hope that you're staying safe out there and being kind to one another bye y'all